if you raise a child on a diet of whole plant foods, which is certainly doable, they breastfeed them till, uh, till they're oh, yeah, one and a half, two years old, and then transition them on to fruits and veggies and beans and nuts, etc., cetera, and uh, nut butters, et cetera. And you certainly raise a child. I've seen now two generation of healthy plant-based kids grow up in the big and strong and clear and bright folks. But the point is that child should never develop. This is the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast, and I'm your host. Maya Acosta. If you're willing to go with me, together we can discover how simple lifestyle choices can help improve our quality of life and increase our longevity in a good way. Let's get started. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back uh, to the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast. Today, uh, for my segment in Doctor in the House, uh, I have uh, a wonderful guest uh, who you will enjoy. Dr. Michael Clapper is a graduate of the University of Illinois College of Medicine in Chicago. He practiced acute care medicine in Hawaii, Canada, California, Florida, and New Zealand. Uh, after a 50-year career as a primary care physician, Dr. Clapper, who is a member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, now focuses on sharing with fellow health professionals the science of how health-promoting food and lifestyle choices can arrest and reverse chronic disease. A longtime radio host and a pilot, Dr. Clapper has served as nutrition advisor to NASA's programs for space colonists on the moon and Mars and on the nutrition task force of the American Medical Students Association. On his website, drclapper.com, visitors can find the latest nutrition information through his numerous articles and videos and learn about his moving medicine, moving medicine forward initiative to promote Applied Nutrition Being Taught in Medical Schools. Dr. Michael Clapper is also our guest of honor at a upcoming culinary medicine workshop. Uh, it is my honor and I'm very excited to have you here. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Clapper. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Riz. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be on your fine broadcast as well. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to start just by, you know, personalizing this, uh, to, for, for the audience in that, uh, I think I first met you on the holistic holiday at Sea Cruise about four or five years ago. And, yeah, uh, I was, I was, uh, I was just so excited to see your name on the uh, agenda. And I, 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 when I started to, uh, uh, make my list of what I'm going to go see, I was like, wow, he's doing four different lectures. Uh, and I, the, what, that's, that was, the, you were the hardest working, uh, lecturer <laughs> on the, on the cruise. I'll tell you that. Uh, and so I really enjoyed that and, uh, I got to meet you. So I was really excited. I got to meet your wife, Elise, uh, and participated in, in some of her, um, yoga classes that she had put on. So, uh, that was a really wonderful event. And I, uh, you know, uh, uh really enjoyed getting to know you and, uh, you know, having developed uh, our relationship since then. So, uh, you know, uh, you've, uh, you've done so much, uh, you know, tell us what, you know, just right now, uh, what's going on in your world, what you're focusing on, uh, you know, what, what's going on with you? Oh, my. Well, sir, uh, as you know, we both deal with the general public and their medical travails, and it's becoming blazingly, blindingly obvious that the majority of patients that you and I see for the standard Western diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, clogged arteries, uh, obesity, inflammatory diseases, the vast majority of them um, are uh, their outright cause, or at least significantly be, been made worse by the standard American diet that the patients are eating every four hours, a steady flood of, of animal protein and animal fats and dairy and oils and sugar and processed foods and salts that floods through the tissues and causes so many imbalances that that clog arteries, as you deal with, uh, but also, again, make us obese, interfere with insulin production, set off inflammation. Um, I've got a T-shirt uh, that I wear when I lecture to medical students saying, it's the food, it's been yeah. the food all along, you know? Right. And so, um, so with that uh, background, we ask him, what do I do? I, I realize that as much as I love acute care medicine and I've made my career dealing with acute problems, um, uh, you've got to really get to the root of the problem. And it's, it's the diet and lifestyle. And so uh, I realize that the... Uh, the point that we can really make the greatest difference um, is with the doctors themselves. Uh, we, we need, mm -hmm. for so many reasons, 
um, to make a, a, a society-wide transition to a diet that is predominantly whole plant foods. You know, uh, we're not going to become vegan overnight. It'd be nice. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, the majority of foods that goes down our throats should have grown out of the ground. And that puts a, um, a very healthy food stream through our systems that uh, really starts reversing these diseases. Uh, and, but... No one's mentioning this to the public. It's really not widely uh, promulgated. And I realize that the one major bottleneck is our noble profession, the doctors. We, we never mention nutrition to our patients. Uh, we uh, The patient leaves with a prescription in her hand for more insulin or more higher dose of statins. But nobody really talks to them about the food. Mm-hmm. The doctors are eating it themselves, too. Um, and I realize it's the doctors, especially the medical students, before. Western medical thoughts seizes their brain there. Uh, the acupuncture point is, is reaching the med students before, uh, you know, while they're still open to the idea that nutrition is important. So when you ask what's been uh, occupying my time lately, uh, it's our nonprofit initiative that you mentioned, Moving Medicine Forward, where I'm going to the medical schools and, uh, and the medical students by Zoom and in person and giving them the lecture I wish someone had given me 50 years ago when I was a first year medical student, telling me, and, and I tell the students, you know, before you order another $500 set of blood tests and another $1,000 scan, ask your patient who's sitting in front of you overweight, diabetic, hypertensive, clogged up and inflamed, what they ate yesterday. And if it's all full of burgers and buffalo wings and pepperoni pizzas, that's why they're sitting in front of you, doctor, with these medical conditions. Send them to the plant-based dietitian. Let her do the counseling. Let her show them the videos. Let her take the job. You see them back in a couple of weeks and see if they're not leaner and healthier. That's the way medicine should be practiced in the 21st century. That's like Johnny Appleseed. Those are the seeds I want to plant uh, in these young doctors to be heads and hearts. Parts, uh, that it's not a matter of just managing your patient's chronic disease. You want to heal these patients, then get real about why they're sitting in front of you, and it's the food they're eating. So right, this is our right. revolutionary medicine, a message that we're trying to get out, and uh, we're having uh, a good bit of success doing it. I'll be glad to talk to you about it. But when you ask what I'm doing, uh, it's I'm devoting full time to our Moving Medicine Forward initiative to get this word to, into the uh, into the awareness of the medical students and doctors. Wonderful, too. wonderful. It's interesting that you say that's a revolutionary message, right? And it's such a simple message. Uh, and uh, the couple of things that, you know, uh, number one, we were we were working with you to try to do some of that moving medicine forward. Uh, uh, and then unfortunately, the pandemic hit and slowed us down a little bit. But um, I'm glad to see that you're continuing to pursue that. And uh, hopefully we can help you uh, as you move through Texas and uh, and hit some of the medical schools. Um, and then something else you said was uh, very interesting is you said send them to the nutritionist and then see them back in a couple of weeks. And to me, that's fascinating because, you know, are you implying that just within a couple of weeks uh, we'll see changes? Oh, it's absolutely remarkable. One of the most exciting transformation in medicine is what happens when we uh, adopt the diet that basically our bodies were meant to run on. We are, we've got basically the same digestive system that our gorilla and bonobo cousins have. They're up in the trees eating leaves and fruits and vegetation all day. Um, they pass these big soft stools and they don't develop clogged arteries. They don't develop type 2 diabetes. They don't develop Crohn's disease. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a quote, natural diet for humans. Well, when you do you start running that through the system, instead of the meat and the dairy and the oils and the processed foods, it is just remarkable. Uh, I used to work at True North Health Center in Northern California, uh, and people would come in uh, with the same classic diseases, obesity, diabetes, hypertension. We put them on a diet of whole plant foods, and within oh, within days, but certainly within a couple of weeks, you see the difference. The, the obesity begins to melt away. 
right? The arteries relax and open up. The high blood pressure starts coming down. The insulin receptors start opening up. Their, their diabetes starts getting better. Uh, their, their skin starts clearing up. The, the eczema and the psoriasis, the acne starts clearing up. Uh, the joints stop hurting so much. The asthmatic folks stop wheezing so much. The migraine headaches get better. They, they turn into normal, healthy people right in front of your eyes. It's the most exciting transformation in medicine. Really, uh, as you know, I tell the med students, what greater gift could you want for your patients? Why are you going into medicine if not to help them truly regain their health? And adopting a whole food plant-based diet is square one to do that. Right. I mean, as an acute care uh, physician, uh, it's fascinating to me. I mean, we, we, we put patients on medications for years and it's not really impacting it tremendously. You know, it's uh, maybe reducing the hemoglobin A1C 1% or reducing the blood pressure 5 to 10 points or reducing the cholesterol 15 points, but they still have all those diseases. And here we got, you know, you're talking about a lifestyle change where these things go away in a matter of weeks. Uh, and uh, that's fascinating to me. Uh, and that's oh, a great yeah. message to share with our medical students. Absolutely. And you remember, when, when, and it's inherited in all medical students, but when you're especially that second, third year medical student, boy, you want those medical tools. You want to learn how to use diuretics to make that edema go away. You want to learn how to use antibiotics to clear out that pneumonia. Well, I'm, I can tell you, how would you like the most powerful therapeutic tool of all? that will not only uh, ameliorate these symptoms that, that are so dramatic, they actually cure the patient's disease. How it's like that, that tool in your armamentarium, in your, with that arrow in your quiver. And it gets their attention. The, it really opens their, their heads up to this, again, this very powerful healing technique. It's, it's the best kind of medicine. Right, right. Uh, well, mm-hmm. so tell me, uh, when you're, when you're uh, making the rounds on these medical schools, uh, how are mm-hmm. the students responding? Oh, it's remarkable. The um, it's getting easier for me in a number of ways. In that, uh, we in every medical school class now there are twenty or thirty students. They've seen films like Forks Over Knives and mm-hmm. What the Health and Cowspiracy. The the lights on in a lot of these young folks' heads. So already that they're that food is important here, uh, and um, and it's the nutritionally interested, lifestyle interested students uh, who we make contact with and they're the ones who uh, issue the invitation to me. We do mm. an end run around the administration. And the, yeah. they, don't want to, they don't want to hear this message. We go right to the students. Uh, and so they set up the webinar, uh, et cetera. And we always get uh, uh, 40, 50, 60 you know, uh, first, second, third, fourth year med students, but we always get family practice residents, surgical residents, internal medicine residents, and a few attending physicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, there, there are a lot of, we're getting a lot of young attendings on the staff that are already members of the American Academy of Lifestyle Medicine. They're, they're already aware of this very powerful wind breezing through medicine now about lifestyle medicine, how powerful it is. Um, so, uh, the students who tune in, they're almost, they're kind of pre-selected. They are open to the message, but they need to hear a senior physician who's been in the trenches for decades saying, this is real. Do you want to heal these patients? Here's the science behind it. And my presentation is titled, What I Wish I Learned in Medical School About Nutrition. And we right. go into the science. How does a plant-based diet change in inflammation, how does it melt away arterial plaque? How does it reverse diabetes? Because because they will show me the science. They want to see the science behind it. And once you show it to them, wow, that's so beautiful. It's so elegant. And uh, and I, we give them lots of resources where to follow up on this. And again, one one lecture can change the course of. Uh, of a career, you know, they say you can't unring the bell, you know, well, once you look behind the curtain, you can't pretend you don't know what's behind the curtain. Right, so we, right. we, we want to tear that curtain down. So the students are very open to this. Uh, I've had very few negative comments. It's just, yeah, people get healthier on a plant-based diet. There's not much controversy about it. The truth of it is. Yeah. You know, I, and I think when I think about just going back in my career, I was in medical school in the late eighties and early nineties. And of course we weren't presented with this information. And then we were the stewards of health for the next few decades. And so when people come to us about nutritional advice, we didn't have anything good right now. If you ask 10 different doctors, 
a nutritional advice, you're going to get 10 different answers. Uh, and, uh, but what I, uh, what I like about what you said is there's a fair, uh, significant number of students today who, who are understanding this message. So they're going to be able to carry that torch forward. Uh, and, and there's going to be a more uniform message and a, a greater understanding. And this is, this is preventive health, right? Uh, it's about preventing disease, uh, which we should be focusing on. Everyone knows that. Uh, so I, I love that idea. Absolutely. Yeah. If you if you raise a child on a diet of whole plant foods, which is certainly doable, they breastfeed them till uh, till they're oh, yeah, one and a half, two years old, and then transition them on to fruits and veggies and beans and nuts, etc., and uh, nut butters, etc. Then you certainly raise a child. I've seen now two generation of healthy plant based kids grow up, and they're big and strong and clear and bright folks. But the point is that child should never develop your disease, your especially mm-hmm. disease. They should never. Develop develop clogged arteries. They should never become obese. They should never develop hypertension. They should never develop autoimmune diseases. Uh, when you say it's the best preventive medicine, it really is. These diseases that you and I spend our careers in battle with really shouldn't happen on a healthy plant-based diet. They should make it to a 110 lean and healthy with clean right. arteries and uh, and free of the of the maladies that you and I spend so much time treating. So yes, it's the ultimate preventive medicine. It certainly is. Yeah, and I think the other thing that strikes me about all of this is it's uh, scientific. It's evidence based. It's backed by data. This isn't just some diet or. Uh, something that uh, people are making up. I mean, this no, is no. It's it's not California woo woo stuff. It, it, it's real. It, yeah, there's, there's good science behind it. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that. That also is. Uh, that's actually where you know where I came from. And as you talked about, what I deal with uh, is this uh, people at end of life with metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome being uh, that combination of obesity, hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, and diabetes, and all these things together lead to. Uh, bad, bad problems. The leading cause of a killer, you know, uh, the leading killer of Americans in the United States is cardiovascular disease. Uh, so uh, again, they're, and they're, and it's striking that they're all essentially preventable. You know, to a great absolutely, extent. Absolutely, absolutely. These are all human-made diseases, and uh, and they shouldn't happen. And we, we need to stop inflicting the suffering upon ourselves. And a lot of, you know, the word doctor comes from the from Latin word is doctrine, is a teacher. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we're teachers. We need to teach a healthy life and healthy eating. And a lot of these diseases would f- exit stage left. There, we agree. Yeah. So, you know, and, but I want to bring something up and this is just, mm-hmm. uh, for our, for our audience to understand that, you know, we want the doctors to be on board and understand, but, but you don't need a doctor to be whole food plant based to you. Right. Absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. And, and I get calls and emails all the time. Who's a plant based doctor in my area? And it's nice to be able to talk to your doctor who won't shake their finger at you when you try to say, talk about plant based nutrition. But in truth, um, if you eat a healthy whole food plant based diet, go out and take a walk every day in the sunshine and, and, and do good work and have love in your life, you really shouldn't have much need for a doctor. Or, you know, they should be able to help taper off your medicine. But after that, you know, if you have call, fall and gash your hand, go to the urgent care center and get your hand sewed up. But other than that, you shouldn't have much need for a doctor, uh, actually. Yep. Uh, your body is, is your, is your best doctor. Yeah, I always joke that we're trying to put ourselves out of business. Out of business, you bet. Yeah. Man, fine yeah. with me. Yeah, that'd be a very noble uh, 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 cause to uh, try to achieve. I, I mm-hmm. do like that. Well, I got a question for you. Uh, okay. Tell me about some of the most surprising things you've learned from medical practice in the last 40 years. Well, uh, again, again, it, it kind of circles back to what we've been implying all along. But when I went to med school in the early 70s, <clears throat> And I would open up my big, thick, black textbook of Harrison's textbook of internal medicine. And, uh, and you look up these diseases, diabetes and, and atherosclerosis. And when I would look at the cause of etiology, inevitably I'd run into these two were etiology unknown. We didn't know, know, mm-hmm. know the cause of them. Right. Uh, and second, on the clinical course, that these diseases are, remember these two were relentlessly progressive. You know, they, once they start going, nothing slows it down. 
miles, like a runaway freight train. So ideology of no relentless fears. And that's the dogma that I implanted in my head. I, I could offer my patients no hope. I had no hope. As one reason I left general practice and went, went into anesthesia, uh, I was just so uh, despondent and seeing my patients getting sicker and sicker. I didn't have anything to offer them. Mm-hmm. And, um, and again, now, uh, at the end of a 50 year career, and I see how reversible these diseases are, uh, you know, I stand on the mountain. Why didn't somebody tell me that these were re- reversible diseases that high blood pressure can be resolved and go away? Type two diabetes can be reversed. Clogged arteries can be reversed. That, when you say what's the most remarkable thing I learned, <laughs> is that these major killer diseases that when I think of all the three in the morning emergency room scenes I was in for chest pain and abdominal pain and, and, uh, and hyperglycemia, it was, uh, again, it was from these food related diseases. Uh, the, the fact that these were reversible with a healthy plant-based diet, that's, uh, that's something to celebrate and, and also tear whatever remaining hairs I have out uh, because uh, <laughs> uh, they were reversible. I wish I would have told you that. So that's the most exciting thing, and again, for your viewers. Um, and it's something to talk about with your, with your primary care doctor. If you've been newly diagnosed with, with high blood pressure, with type 2 diabetes, um, talk to your doctor. Hey, so, uh, doc, Let's come up with a program. I like to know how are we going to reverse my high blood pressure? How are we going to reverse my type 2 diabetes? How are we going to reverse my inflammatory arthritis here? The, and just to, the patient needs to know this. The doctor needs to know that right. these are largely reversible. These Some depends how much damage has been done. You may not uh, reverse every last uh, symptom and not that every medication might disappear from your medicine cabinet. But uh, to just to open the door to the fact that so many of these severe chronic diseases uh, have a large reversible component again starting with your diet and your lifestyle you got uh, enough sleep you need uh, they walk every day uh, mm-hmm. but the reversibility of these diseases by far is the, is the biggest ray of light that I've run into in my medical career yeah absolutely fascinating to me in fact uh, you know uh, uh I'd like to, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your time at True North maybe uh, talk about mm-hmm. some stories about you know uh, people would really oh. love to hear specifics about the reversibility. You know, yeah, I, I, I imagine you've got, you know, and you would see patients uh, maybe for seven days, 10 days or a month and, uh, and see dramatic changes. Can you share something, some of those? Oh, we absolutely. Thank you. That's uh, opens the doors. Lots of wonderful memories come flooding back. Uh, so uh, North Health Center is in Santa Rosa, California, about an hour north of San Francisco in the uh, wine country. Uh, and it's a converted heart, uh, apartment complex. They have room for about 50 to 60 inpatients. Uh, and uh, there are MDs on staff, uh, uh, osteopaths, chiropractors on staff. <laughs> and uh, everyone is assessed medically and their medical issues are dealt with if you are an insulin requiring diabetic or whatever. Uh, you know, proper medical care is given. But the baseline is that uh, everyone, uh, when they come in, uh, is uh, fed a diet based on whole plant foods. Breakfast is hearty oatmeal with fruit and, and uh, uh, nuts and seeds and some oat milk or, or soy milk. Lunches and dinners, uh, there's always a big colorful salad, a hearty bowl of vegetable soup, big plates of steamed green and yellow vegetables, and some healthy starch uh, of uh, sweet potatoes or uh, uh, squash, <clears throat> or and uh, lots of legumes, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, mm-hmm. uh, in various national uh, nationalities, uh, Italian style, Mexican, Asian. Uh, and so this steady uh, plant-based food stream would start pouring through the person's bloodstream, meal after meal after meal. <clears throat> and it's like uh, the analogy I use, uh, like uh, automotive uh, terminology, if you if you had a nice gasoline burning sports car, but instead of regular gasoline, you're in, into the gas tank, uh, you're pouring diesel fuel, which is kerosene. It's oily; it doesn't mm-hmm. burn clearly. And the spark plugs foul up, and the gas line clogs up, and there's black smoke coming out of the back of the of the, of the exhaust pipe. Oh, my car has a disease. What's wrong with my car? Car doesn't have a disease. 
It's just it's malfunctioning predictably, precisely, uh, as it would malfunction by putting the wrong fuel into the uh, system not designed to run on it. Right, that's right. Of okay. co- that, that's, of course, what's happening in our body. And the meat and the dairy and the oils, the sugar, that's the wrong fuel for this plant-burning hominid body we have here. So when you put the right fuel in, you know, and you, you drain out the diesel fuel, clean off the spark plugs, go open up the gas line, boy, that, uh, the, uh, kind of the engine, the machine runs great. And really, you see that within a few days, there, there's some sometimes some detox symptom. A person may get a little lightheaded, a little headachey for a few days. But after three, four, five days of that, boy, you see them in the courtyard, and they their eyes are clear. They got a spring in their step. And usually, the first thing they say, they look at. Now, I had my first good dump in the last ah. six months, Doc. I feel great, you know, and uh, and so their bowels start working really well. Yeah, it certainly improves their view of the universe. But then we and we we take uh, the intern knocks on the door twice a day, and everybody's room checks their blood pressure, checks their vital sign, and the people on the high blood pressure they notice that. Um, uh, those blood pressures start coming down. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we hear, Doc, I stood up, went to the bathroom last night, I got lightheaded, thought it might pass out. Whew, that's the end of the blood pressure pills. And, and we're able to get people off medications that I was told they will take these pills the rest of their life right. uh, as a lifetime medication. No. You not only can get these people off their medication, you have to get them off. They will, they will stand up and pass out. <laughs> the blood pressure is too low. Right. Uh, that was something I was told never happens, but it does predictably. The same thing with our insulin requiring diabetic folks. So come in on 20 units of insulin because uh, their insulin receptors are so clogged up with fat. Uh, well, you stop the fat, stop the dairy, stop the oils. Their insulin receptors open up and suddenly they need less insulin, less insulin. And finally, their blood sugar is going down to their boots. And finally, uh, you write the order, stop in DC insulin, so discontinue insulin. <clears throat> The first time I wrote that order, stop the insulin. Oh, wow. I, th- I thought there'd be a puff of smoke <laughs> and, the, and the ghost of my internal medicine professor would appear, say, what did you say? Stop his insulin. Nobody gets off insulin. Well, of course, nothing of the sort happened. Uh, yes, we get lots of people off insulin. And so that was an exciting moment. The things that I, you never thought you'd see Kind of came to pass regularly there and in the hands of any good lifestyle medicine physician, you know, you get to these same wonderful changes. But I'll always remember one morning we had a woman who had been plagued with really severe inflammatory arthritis. Uh, and she came in, uh, she did a water fast, uh, for, for 10 days and then started eating. And I came in to make rounds with the interns and uh, she had big tears tears going down her, her cheeks. And I said, Marilyn, what's wrong? Are you in pain? And she says, no, this is the first time I've been able to make a fist in 10 years. My, wow. that my joints are working again. And it just melted my heart. I gave her such a big hug. And you don't hear that in most clinics. And so, no, when you no, that's got to be so. That's got to be so gratifying oh. because because curing chronic disease is not what we do traditionally in our family practice clinics and in our internal medicine clinics. They're just giving out, you know, and you know, I hate to characterize it this way, but oftentimes just giving out pills to manage the disease. So it's got to be so gratifying to actually reverse someone's disease and have them walk out of there having been de-prescribed of multiple medications. Oh, you go to bed at night and, and you go, yes, you know, great day, man. That, that makes your whole, you know, now I know I became a doctor, you know, when, when you hear that from a patient. Absolutely. Right, right. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that kind of brings to my mind, and you brought it up that, you know, back when you went to medical school, you were taught these conditions exist and they're progressive. And that was it. They didn't know the etiology of them. But we have to accept that over the past few decades, we have now begun to elucidate the causes for them. And therefore, you know, maybe our model for treating them should be different uh, rather than just, okay, we don't know what causes it. So here, take a pill. But now, okay, now we know what causes it. And we know that by doing this and this and this, you can actually reverse it. Uh, And that makes a a lot of sense to me uh, kind of at a basic level. Unfortunately, I think our many, so many of our physicians were still trained in that kind of old model that that's where they stick. 
Absolutely. And, and you use such a beautiful, elegant, and powerful term a minute ago that I had never heard in 45 years of this. Deprescribing. You know, what a beautiful concept. Why we're, cause, you know, we're quick to reach for that prescription pad and, yeah. and we, we prescribe like crazy here. But there comes a point that not only the patient doesn't need the medicine, they, you've got to, you've got to get them off the medicine. Well, there's an art to, to, you can't just stop them all at once. Some of these medicines, you got to taper off. You got to mm-hmm. do it in a various sequence. That's the art of deprescribing. And, and so beautiful. We're starting to teach medical students that, but how, how wonderful it is with a positive sign that that's necessary at all because it was it was not part of our vocabulary growing up here as physicians so that's a very hopeful sign that uh, the idea of deep prescribing is now afoot uh, in medical circles good sign. right right and i can see where it's so for, uh, foreign to our current practitioners just they weren't trained that way but i think uh you know you've got uh you know you hit the ball on the head so to speak that uh by getting to the younger physicians and helping them understand this new way of looking at things, uh, a new paradigm uh, that they they have the opportunity to move forward and be uh, uh, healers uh, and uh, and actually cure people. Yes, uh, the term I use. I want to reach the students before pharmacosclerosis sets in their <laughs> brain. There, and you know, they think that drugs and surgery are the only treatment for diseases. There, right? But before you. Before that sets in, ask them what they ate. Uh, right. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, we spent, I remember we spent an entire semester, no, in, in fact, an entire year with pharmacology. And it was an intense course, and we were learning everything about drugs and how to prescribe them and their side effects. And gosh, don't get me started on the side effects. Uh, you know, my patients would come in on uh, four or five or six medications for their for their chronic diseases, and they'll also have two or three or four medications for the side effects from those medications. So not only are you taking six meds for your, your diseases, you're taking four meds for the side effects from your diseases. Uh, and that's that's crazy. But, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I would love to see us, you know, focus, uh, give as much time on nutrition uh, in health as much as we give uh, pharmacology in health, you know. Uh, and then And then also it's striking to me how the, 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 the medications themselves in general, you know, obviously there are good medications and they're important, uh, antibiotics and, and other things like that. But, uh, the ones that, you know, we kind of use a lot for our chronic diseases are not nearly as effective as, as a change in nutrition. You know, there's nothing, there's no medication out there that'll drop your cholesterol 50 or 75 points, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but, uh, but, but diet will in just four weeks. Right. So uh, lower your cholesterol, stop eating somebody else's cholesterol right, for starters. Right. <laughs> well, to that end, what do you think about, you know, uh, we were, uh, before we started uh, the interview, we kind of talked about how it's it's tough for us uh, when we know the right message and we want to share this with our patients, but there's such little adoption. What do you think about that and how can that be uh, addressed? Oh, my Homo sapiens. Uh, we're a very uh, what a species, you know. The uh, uh, the word, the term, uh, Homo sapiens. Uh, sapient. The word sapient means wise. We, we, we're wisdom. Right. Uh, if you're sapient, you're wise. Oh, the wise one. Oh my! If we were wise, we would only have to be told once by your doctor: stop eating animals, eat a plant based diet, and come back and see me about. Okay, doctor. And that, that would be the end of it, you know. And that, come back and see so, me in fifty. And come back and see me in fifty years, right? Fifty <laughs> years, exactly. Yeah. You, you shouldn't need me. Uh, but alas, uh, we humans, we love the taste uh, that we get used to. The taste that we grew up with um, gets associated with with, with family and uh, our childhood memories, and we love the taste of the of the hot dog and the ice cream and all those things we ate before, and the things that we are constantly told from the advertising and from their parents and society that this is you must you eat must eat meat three times a day uh, that uh, uh, this ice cream is low fat so it's okay for you all you know all these ways that that uh, things that aren't good for us get uh, packaged uh, in, a, in a way that we think they're acceptable and we wind up paying the price again it's gasoline and it's, it's diesel fuel into a gasoline burning engine uh, and so you and I had, uh, as plant-based physicians, we've got this major uh, obstacle, this major hurdle, this 
wall to break through to get to the patients. And, and this is the art of medicine. And uh, there's, we have tools available for us um, that we didn't have before. And every year there's jumpstart programs, there's, there's films, there's, uh, uh, there's personal coaches, there's uh, uh, insurance incentives. There. We're nibbling away around the edges. Um, but, but our society isn't really serious about it. Uh, the, the meat industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the medical industry make a lot of money keeping things just the way they are. And, uh, and, uh, cause the truth is animal agriculture needs to disappear for the planet itself. Uh, we need to get, get the cows off the fields, let the forests come back as the trees grow. They take carbon dioxide out of the air and turn it into solid wood. For all these reasons, Animal agriculture needs to go the way of whaling and slavery, you know, something we used to do. But, oh, that's, you know, rings so many bells there that, well, that's, I'm not, I'm not American. If I'm American, I get to eat my steak. And so that's part of what keeps people stuck there. Well, that, the, the young people hopefully will leap over that and not be seduced by that. They give me hope, young people in the internet. So when you ask, you know, what, what's it going to take? We're nibbling around the edges, but again, so far, it's done on a one by one by one. You have that patient who's sitting in front of you with the clogged arteries and who's just had a mini stroke and he's already got chest pain. Uh, you, you often have his ear. He, what do I need to do, doc? Uh, tell me what I need to do. And those are the ones who are most open to, to the plant-based message. And, and if you can link them up with a good coach or a dietitian, you know, that often is what it takes. Um, you know, often the wife is, uh, I'll, whatever she makes me, I'll eat, you know, and it's a matter of getting to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, and one of the first questions I ask is who does the shopping and the cooking in your house? That's, that's such an important issue. And, uh, and what, and ask the opposite. What, what, what's keeping you from adopting a plant-based diet? Well, the guys at work will laugh at me. And, uh, you know, you got to deal with the social issues. There's, uh, there, there, there's, it's a multifactorial issue. And the, and the physician has to be, uh, you know, a, uh, a, a, a juggler with lots of balls in the air there. But, uh, but, uh, but, an, but an improvisational artist to, uh, to strike the right chord and help, and lead that person. Now, how about just one meal a day? How about a plant-based lunch every day? Let's start with that, you know, and, uh, whatever they need to hear, whatever door you can open for them, that, that's the door to open and, uh, and help them walk through it because, Nature, uh, you know, uh, to have a stroke and not die, you know, uh, life uh, certainly gets unfun at that point. Because people say, well, I'll have my heart attack and die, die. Again, God dies something. But then you have your stroke and you don't die. You have your heart attack and you don't die. And you wind up getting out of breath going to the mailbox because you lost half your heart muscle. Um, the, you want to prevent those tragedies in the patient's lives. So, um, so you listen and you talk and you find that little opening that, uh, uh, and, uh, you put good, great plant-based food in their mouths, you know, great plant-based chili. And you know, oh, ooh, I could eat that. That's, uh, that's okay. If that's plant-based food, I could eat that. Yes. You know, so. So it's quite an art to, to get, uh, but eventually, as I'm saying, you know, this is what it takes for those counseling sessions to, to help convince your patients. But hopefully, hopefully, um, this is going to be a sweep through society, especially through the young people when they get what a, what a threat to their future existence of the, the uh, meat based diet truly is. I'm hoping that it will sweep through uh, in music videos and talk shows and podcasts where eating meat becomes like smoking cigarettes or working or wearing fur. And if a young person orders a beef burger, his friends say, are you still eating that, man? You know, that, that, then we, you and I won't have to wrestle with every individual patient. It'll just be what's done, what society does at this point. So that's what we're working for here. And uh, hopefully we'll get there. There's no, we got no other choice.
Right, right. And we just have to continue sharing the message and hope that it takes uh, traction in some people and then it keeps going. Uh, you know, what, what, you, what you're saying to me or what I hear is that the physician has to be more than just a doctor. They have to be kind of a guide or a coach, a life coach, and, and guide people and, and also find uh, uh, ways to help them uh, navigate uh, our current world. I, I, I always say that if just simply knowing the right thing to do was all we needed, everybody would do the right thing. But there's so many things that impact our decision making. Uh, and, you know, there's people who do lots of things that they know is not good for them. People smoke, uh, people drink to excess, and uh, there, uh, and then people eat meat. Uh, it's funny, my patients uh, all come in. They all know that uh, if I say, what changes do you, before I, if I don't even tell them, okay, this is what you knew, I say, what changes do you think you need to make? And and the vast majority will say, well, I need to eat less meat before I even ever say it. So they know it. Uh, and so they know the right thing. It's just a matter of finding a way to uh, implement it. And like you said, there's so many factors. It's multifactorial. It's cultural. It's social. It's personal. And it is very personal, isn't it? You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as a, as a uh, vascular surgeon, patients will come in and see me preoperatively for uh, consultation. And I might talk about cu- cutting their carotid artery open or cutting open their belly to repair their aneurysm and their aorta or to do major bypass operations. And these are not minor things in my elderly sick patients. And, but after one meeting, typically 15 minutes, 30 minutes, I've instilled enough uh, confidence in them that they'll let me do it. Uh, and they're confident in it. But the minute I start talking about food and nutrition, uh, there's a whole different story. They think I'm crazy and they, they, uh, I lack credibility, uh, which is very, so that it's a very personal thing, uh, and it's hard to get through. Yeah, absolutely. Funny thing. Uh, what you just said is so profound. When we're through this interview, I'm going to ponder that. That's, that's absolutely right. I mean, uh, the procedures you do, sir, are among the most invasive of all that medicine has in our material. And, and the, uh, absolutely, Doc, where, where do you need to cut me over? But change my diet, not eat cheeseburgers. What? <laughs> What a radical thing you're proposing. Right. Yeah, that, that's radical, right? Uh, that's, you know, that's radical, crazy. man. <laughs> Yeah, Funny. crazy. Well, um, so uh, I've got a couple other questions I've, I've sure. kind of uh, got here for you. Um, uh, we, we covered the medical students, I think. Uh, what is your, I mean, I th- and I think we've danced around this, uh, but very specifically, what would be your message to patients in the 21st century? Um. <clears throat> Well, I tell them your body is never not looking. You, you can't. There's no fooling your body. You know. Welcome to camp. Stop kidding yourself. Uh, you, you can't. <laughs> you, you, you can't tell your body. Look over here. I need a cheeseburger there. Oh, what was that? You know, I didn't do anything. Who are you kidding? You know. Right. Your bloodstream knows. Your liver knows. Your arteries know what you did. So Shakespeare said, "To thine own arteries be true." If he didn't, he should have said that. <laughs> um, and. Uh, so every meal counts is the point. And we are plant eating hominids. The more whole plant foods you eat, the leaner and healthier you're going to be. That's square one. That's step one. So swerve your diet to that to the greatest extent possible. Do you have to be a hundred percent vegan? No. And if you have a little piece of meat once or twice a month, it's lightning probably is not going to come out of the sky and strike you dead. You don't have to use the V word. The, the vegan police are not going to show up in your door and not look in your fridge. You know, but but do the best you can. So uh, have a salad every day. Um, have uh, whole plant foods uh, to the greatest extent possible. Get lots of legumes in your diet, and the less animal products of all types, the better. And the less processed thing, for, uh, things out of colorful packages and boxes aren't real food. You know, yeah, eat eat the things that that grew in the garden that you could identify. Well, there's a tomato, there's a cucumber. That that's what you want to eat there. So as long as those kind of foods are composing the majority of your food stream, um, you know, you can cheat a little bit around the edges. But it's <clears throat> Dr. Colin Campbell 
wrote this wonderful book called Whole, W-H-O-L-E. And the point is, instead of focusing on this vitamin and that mineral, whatever, it's the whole food stream. You know, that gorilla eating the leaves and fruit up in the trees. You know, it's the whole food stream going through that magnificent creature's digestive system that makes them, gives them the, the, the spectacular energy that they have, uh, and vitality. Um, well, again, with us, it's that whole food stream. As long as it's made of whole plant foods, uh, you're going to have very little traffic with people like Dr. Riz and myself here. You go, go, go live your life, be healthy and happy, stay out of the clutches of the doctors as much as you can there. And you should be able to do that with a, with a healthy diet and lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. That'll give me more time to go to the gym. So Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I will go ride my bike and, yeah. and uh, play my clarinet. Absolutely. Well, uh, uh, that's, I think, a, a wonderful message. Dr. Clapper, I've really enjoyed having you uh, uh, join us for the show. Uh, I thought before we finish up, I'd uh, ask you if there's uh, uh, websites or social media that you'd like to share with people or and also talk, you know, is there any things that you just kind of generally want to share about your initiatives or what's going on or what's coming up for you? Thank you very much. Um, a couple of things. Uh, if people would like to learn more about what we're doing and actually help us do this because we have expenses, um, go to our website, movingmedforward.com, movingmedforward, and you'll learn about uh, what we're doing and, and how you can help. Um, and uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Cla- uh, Dr. Michael Clapper. Uh, we've got an Instagram and a Facebook uh, channel. They're, they're down in, uh, uh, in the show notes here. Uh, and um, the, let's see, is there, uh, oh, and uh, if you are going to be in the Dallas area this week, I don't know when we're going to be broadcasting this program, uh, but uh, come on up. Uh, to the um, uh, to the culinary workshop that we're having this coming Sunday, July 22nd. Uh, and I'll be there, and Dr. Riz and Dr. Colin Zhu will be there, and Maya will be there. So um, so do join us at the upcoming workshop. I hope uh, this is broadcast in time for that to uh, uh, be in time for the notice. Well, thank um, you. We appreciate that little plug there. <laughs> okay, you bet. So uh, check out our website, check out my YouTube channel, and uh, thank you for your support. And if you know, if you have know so a medical student at some med school or you know someone's on the faculty of a medical school who might be interested in getting me in for and, and giving this lecture go to our website movingmedforward.com and we have a form to fill out uh, give us the name of those med students and faculty members and we'll get in touch with them and help move medicine forward uh, so we create a new generation of nutritionally aware young doctors and pharmacists and nurses and dentists and occupational therapists they all need to hear the message and we're going to try and reach every one of them. Thank you. Agreed. What a wonderful message. And by the way, so I'm going to throw my own plug in here. You just reminded me. Uh, My daughter just got accepted to medical school. uh, And uh, so she'll be going to one of our neighboring states, Arkansas. uh, And uh, you'll be hearing from us very soon about setting something up. Wonderful. Uh, Good for her. Well, thank you. Okay, friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion with Dr. Clapper. He's a a pioneer and an inspiration to me and Maya and and so many of us. Uh, If you would like more interviews like this one, uh, simply send us a message at my social media account, uh, Dr. Dr. Underscore Riz Underscore Bukhari uh, on IG. Again, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast with your host, Maya Acosta. If you've enjoyed this content, please share with one friend who can benefit. You can also leave us a five-star review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash HLS. This helps us to spread our message. As always, thank you for being a listener.